This is going to be all about sharing and forming bonds. That's right, it's all about non-metal atoms. Non-metal atoms share their electrons to form covalent bonds in a process that benefits from both. When two atoms share a pair of electrons, they get joined together. Depending on the atoms, this bond can use one pair of electrons or several pairs. The electrons that are shared are always in the highest occupied energy level of the atom. The sharing gives both atoms a complete highest energy level. The covalent bond that is formed is very strong. It takes a lot of energy to break it. Take hydrogen and chlorine, for example. If you know your atoms, then you know that hydrogen has one electron in its highest energy level and chlorine has seven. When these two form a covalent bond, this adds one electron to hydrogen's highest energy level and one to chlorine's highest energy level, completing both of them. Remember, two electrons fills the first energy level and eight electrons fills levels two and three. The combined molecule is called hydrogen chloride. The N of chlorine becomes a D in chloride, just to trip you up when you're doing your exam. <laughs> Covalent bonding between two atoms needn't be with just one pair of electrons. You can get two and even three pairs. But always pairs. It's like socks, shoes, gloves or eyeballs. Here's a way to work out how many covalent bonds an atom can make. It's eight minus, wait for it, minus the group number. Remember the periodic table? It gives the group number. What do you mean, what's the group number? <sighs> if an atom is in group seven then it's going to need 8 minus 7 equals 1 covalent bond. It's only got one gap in its highest energy level. Yeah, you get the idea. The number of vacancies in the highest energy level is the number of covalent bonds an atom can make. Oh, good magazine, this. Might buy it. Ooh, special pull-out section as well. That's the stuff. Covalent bonds. There are two standard ways to draw these bonds. I like covalent bonds so much, I often draw them both. The most common is to join the chemical symbols with a straight line. If there is more than one shared pair of electrons, then you need to join the atoms with more lines. A double bond uses two lines and a triple uses three. You get the picture? Another way to show covalent bonds is a dot and cross diagram. Here is a chlorine atom. But when you draw a bonding diagram, you only need to show the electrons in the highest energy level. They're the only ones which can bond. Here's how you show a chlorine molecule. One pair of electrons is shared between the two atoms. Oh, it's a magical moment. Chlorine gas is made from molecules like this. And here's how you show oxygen gas. Notice that these two atoms share two pairs of electrons. This is a double bond. Oh yeah, let's mix it up a bit. Here are some compounds. That's when atoms of different elements join together. Isn't that hydrogen chloride as a dot and cross diagram? Notice that both hydrogen atoms now have two electrons in their highest energy levels and the oxygen atom has eight. OK, whatever you can smell, that's not me. That's ammonia. It's made from one nitrogen atom with three hydrogen atoms. And it stinks. There are three covalent bonds here. Carbon can make four covalent bonds. When it does this with four hydrogen atoms, you get, you've guessed it, methane. Methane, or CH4, is represented like this. Ooh, that was pretty exciting. Not the rocket thing, obviously. Just the fact that methane is formed with four bonds.